Hello. Good morning. You guys kind of lied to me. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Welcome to my channel. Um, this is going to be a week of net galley, but it's going to be a little different this time. Um, because you guys lied to me and said that you liked long form videos. But, ooh, you really don't watch them, so this may be a little different. Alrighty, so as I said, um, usually I do my long form vlog videos where I show you guys my life and things like that. Well, those are kind of underperforming on my channel, but, um, well, at least the analytics are saying that they're underperforming, uh, but I don't know. So we're going to do this one in a little bit different format, maybe, uh, to see how you guys might like that. It's going to be less, uh, video montages of books that I am reading or things that I am doing within my life during the week. Ooh, my face is burning now. Um, and more reading sort of clips. Just, you know, this is the book that I'm reading right now and this is how I felt about it as soon as I finished it type thing. Uh, see if you guys like that one. And hopefully they'll be shorter this time or this video will be shorter, I don't know. Um, as you guys know, I am doing big things over on Patreon, so I would hope that you check that out. There is an explanation of all the tiers that are over there and all the different programming and videos that will be offered over on the Patreon page, which will be really ramping up in 2021. There is going to be some extra content over there that if you're not a Patreon this year in 2020 uh, that you won't have access to. So get in early. And if you're looking for that link, it's down in that description box, uh, as well as so much other stuff. I will be timestamping the days as we go along, like I have been doing as chapters. Um, and then I will also leave a list of the books that I actually talk about throughout the video. Well, not really throughout the video, but um, I'm about to give you a list of the books that I'm going to try and read for this a week of NetGalley vlog. Um, and the whole purpose behind my week of NetGalley vlogs is so that I can get caught up. Uh, I just turned in a few reviews and my percentage is up to like 62. I'm trying to get that up even higher and trying to get my uh, 2020 list of arcs that I have from over there from that galley down to a manageable number before 2021 reviews really start to have to, you know, be input and things like that, or books start to release. Um, and I want to also make sure that I am able to get approved for books that are coming out in 2020. So uh, that is what is going to happen right now. I'm going to tell you which books I'm going to be concentrating on while I do my hair because oh, it was a tasking. I didn't actually just get up at that time that you guys saw, but um, I got my kid up and told him to go downstairs because today is like a virtual day for him um, to like catch up on work. And if the teacher decided to like give extra work craziness. Um, so yes, I actually got up and washed my hair. If you've ever wondered how long my hair actually is, this is post wash hair right here it is so thick and just oh my gosh wowzer so in my week or my fifth episode of uh reading with net galley i actually um what should I call it i tried to read on scribd which is super difficult for me because i have Amazon, yes, I know, crazy, bad, monopoly, bad Amazon. Um, I have Amazon products and equipment and devices, so I can't use Scribd on there. And when I use Scribd, I have to either be on my computer or I have to use my telephone, my cell phone. 
and I like to do more things on my cell phone than just listen to books so uh, yeah that doesn't happen very often but uh this one is going to be specifically uh, audibles that I have purchased and hoopla digital uh, books that I have downloaded so that's gonna be fun so here is the list of books that I'll be reading or attempting this week uh, we're starting off with Temporary Wife Temptation by J.C. Lee, Secret Crush Seduction by J.C. Lee. Yeah, I'm not very good at doing the whole hair thing, so don't come for me in the comments about how I just destroy my hair or whatever. This is how I do my hair. Um, All Stirred Up by Brianna Moore. Uh, All Scott and Bothered by Kerrigan Brin. Not Like the Movies by Carrie Winfrey, Well Played by Jen DeLuca, The Roommate by Rosie Dannon, Like Lovers Do by Tracy Livesey, and On the Corner of Hope and Maine by Beverly Jenkins. So those are the books that I'm going to be trying to get to. Um, if for some reason I get slumpy in any of those books, um, I am going to be DNFing like nobody's business. I'm not even going to hesitate uh, to DNF and then let you guys know why I DNF'd it. Um, because I am such a mood reader and I'm not, I just don't feel like this is the time I have too many books to get through to, you know, deal with all that. So there is that. Oh, my arms already hurt from doing my hair. Um, and this stuff is going back up into a ponytail like it has been for whew, quite a few days. I don't do hair down because this is just too wild for me. I can't do anything with it and my arms get tired. So there is that. Um, what else was I going to say? I was going to say something else in this one. No, I wasn't. Okay. I'm going to pop an earbud in and get some reading done. Um, I was reading a book earlier and ended up DNF in that one because it just wasn't for me. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this week of... Uh, net galley stuff and uh we'll see you in a little bit okay i swear it feels like my camera is like cockeyed it's on the tripod and everything like that but um it feels like it's off but it's dark it's dark outside it's only like seven o'clock because dry land starts at like seven and uh it was pretty dark when we got here so i'm sitting here in my car with my light on and getting ready to like start the second book for the day. Yay, I'm super excited about that. Woo, so let's get into talking about what I finished today already, which was Tempor Temporary Wife Temptation by J.C. Lee. I really, really enjoyed this book. It is the fake dating straight into marriage of convenience with a deal type situation and, um. It is written by a Asian author and it's about Korean characters. I loved every moment of it. Um, I cannot say that I am an expert in if uh, the information that was provided is correct or not, but from the two years of um, my military service that I had in Korea and you know, getting to know some Korean people. Um, I thought it was so much fun and so just characteristic of uh, the Korean culture. I really enjoyed it. Um, it took me back to those days of being in Korea and being around my Korean friends and, um, you know, talking to them and knowing sort of what they're about and stuff like that. I, I thought it was really good. Um, so this book follows Natalie, who is the vice president 
standing in of HR and she is trying to get the job either permanently or trying to become um, the president of HR, I think it was, once the old HR person leaves. And um, she ends up having a family emergency because her sister and brother-in-law end up passing and she has to take care of their very, very, very young child. Oh my goodness. Super sweet. The child's like six months old. So she um, is no, is the sister that passed away wanted the child to go to her, um, who is Natalie. And then his parents, the brother-in-law's parents wanted to kind of fight her for custody or what have you, because she's such a driven uh, woman that wants to make her own career path and everything like that. And I really like that aspect. So when she ends up missing her interview to become the vice president or become the president or her, she misses her interview. So she decides to, um, kind of ambush Garrett, who is the soon to be CEO of the company that she works for as HR. And, um, they meet at the club. Both of them have sort of had this, um, sort of run. They had a run in first of all, um, before they met at the club or before they saw each other at the club. And he thought she was kind of stuck up and, you know, but she was intriguing to him. She always thought he was a good looking guy and just her type and stuff like that. So she gets dressed up and tries to ambush him at the club because she knew that he had a meeting on the books. And in turn, he finds out that his grandmother is like really pushing on him to have an arranged marriage. And he's like, oh no, I can't, I can't. I can't do that because I already have a fiance. I'm already getting married. And the grandmother's like, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not gonna get the company unless you get married. So he's like, dang, now I gotta find a wife, right? So they're at the club, they bump into each other. She dresses up to go to the club. And when he initially like taps her on the shoulder to buy her a drink, he doesn't recognize her. And then he recognizes her and it's like, ooh, oh, you're not as stuck up as I thought you were. Ooh, you have piqued my fancy. Hmm. Yes, yes, you have. So um, they end up having an arrangement um, of, you know, this whirlwind sort of get married and, you know, things like that. And once they're married, they kind of put in their sort of marriage of convenience that there wouldn't be any sexy time. Well, they both have sexual tension towards each other and that doesn't last. It doesn't last. It does last in this freaking story. He's like pushing her away and she's like, oh, you wanna be a douche about this? Not a problem. Um. I can be a bitch, not don't let my reputation uh, that you know about fool you, okay? Because she's known in the company as a ball buster. So this is their story and I really, really enjoyed it. And I love this whole family thing that they have going on. I think, I think, I hope you guys will know after I finish reading it but I think the secret crush temptation nope secret crush seduction is which is the second book in this series um is about the sister that we were introduced to and I'm kind of excited to get to it so uh I'll be doing that right now while I'm sitting in the car, I can really get into it because I think the audiobook is only about six or seven hours. And at two times speed, I can get about two hours more than that, like three hours of it read. 
because it's an hour and a half and then if I double it in speed, that's three hours. So I can get three hours into it. So I can get almost to 50% if I get off the camera and start listening to it. So that's what I am going to do during swim practice since I have to be here until 8.45. So, ah, I hope you guys go check out this book because I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think lots of people will enjoy it because it's marriage of convenience and that is like a trope that lots of people like. So there is that check in. I'll see you guys after I finish the next book. Alrighty, hello, what's up people? So um, it is Wednesday. Um, I don't think I have put any, uh, I didn't think I took any clips yesterday whatsoever because I didn't really finish um, the book that I was reading next, which was uh, Secret Crush Seduction by J.C. Lee. It's the second book in the uh, Heirs of Han Soul series. It is part of the Harlequin Desire series or line and um, JC does has three books within this series and I really enjoyed it. I did find um, our main female character Adelaide to be a little mm, a little childish at times and Michael to be a little childish as well. So here's the premise behind this story. So you have Michael who is um, Garrett's best friend. So he is eight years older than Adelaide. She has always had a crush on him, wanted to run with them when they were kids. And she was really, really heartbroken when Michael went and got married. But then Michael mysteriously gets divorced and now he runs the PR stuff for the Hansel um, company. And Adelaide is trying to get her grandmother's um, approval so that she can start a fashion forward fashion line that uh, helps people that are on the spectrum and um, because I guess a lot of people on the spectrum have issues with textures and feelings and clothes and things like that are just not afforded to them so Adelaide comes up with this new line and she was top of her class she wants to really Put her stake into the Hansel uh, corporation and everything like that but she feels like her grandmother is not giving her any um, any uh, any stepping stone or any clout into um, into that right so uh, she ends up deciding to do like a uh, gosh I don't want to say a, it's not a giveaway it's a Ooh, a contest, a fashion contest, um, and does like a whole runway and everything like that. Well, she pulls Michael in to kind of help her with it, but then they start exploring their crushes on each other, and this is their story. But then Michael ends up making some decisions on his own because of his past where he should have just asked Adelaide what was going on and what she expected and things like that. So both of them really kind of acted a little childish throughout this story, but I did enjoy it. Um, I am looking forward to the third book, which is I Think About the Cousin. I haven't started that one yet uh, because it is not on my week of NetGalley. Even though I did get it from NetGalley, I have the copy of it. It's not set to release until later on in November. So I wanted to try and get some of the backlist of the books that I have from NetGalley, which is what this is about. Um, I then started, uh, well, let's see, Like Lovers Do by Tracy Livesey, which is another book that was on that list that I gave you guys on Monday. And I was quickly interrupted because Brie from Falling for Romance on Instagram. She was like, hey, me, Sarah, from The Bookish Knitter, and Chloe from Always Booked are doing this uh, panel, or well, not panel, they do a book club, and this month's book is Verity from Colleen Hoover. Now, this is just a little side tidbit. This has nothing to do with the week or anything like that. Well, I don't like Colleen Hoover's writing. I've read like four, maybe five of her books and I'm not a fan. So when Brie was like, 
yo, I started this book and I kind of want you to read it with me so that we can discuss it. Um, I was like, you know what? I am in between books. I just started like lovers do. I know I'm going to love it. It's a short, quick listen. So I can jump back on that one after I read Verity. I'm going to do it. I downloaded it. And y'all, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This book is wild. Verity is a mind fuck. It is absolutely fucking crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So I can like talk about it here uh, with you guys because this will actually come out after they do their live show and they've already discussed it and things like that. Um, but woo, I am at like 60% right now sitting in this car. And I, um, as soon as I finish this clip and stop jaw jacking, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish listening to it because it's a late night for swim practice, which means I'll be in this car until probably about nine. Oh, 9.30 depends on how long it takes me to drive home. But um, yeah, y'all, this book is hooked up. I have no clue why it won the awards that it did for the romance category because that it's not believable to be a romance not at all in any sort of fashion or anything like that it is so fucked up it's so much of a thriller uh that i just don't even i don't even have the words for it i'm just like what 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 am i reading what am i reading i broke my do not read ban on colleen hoover for this to be mind fucked oh my gosh so adding this book into this vlog and you guys will hear about it when I get finished with it so I'm gonna go do that and then I'm also gonna be reading uh like lovers do after that like immediately after um I finish Verity I'll be back to like lovers do loving like lovers do so it is the second book in the girlfriend girl trips girl trip series by Tracy and I initially thought that I needed to read the first book because there is some talk about the first couple in the beginning of the first book but now I'm thinking I don't necessarily need to. It was like the prologue or chapter one or something like that where they talked about the other couple just a little bit um, because they were on vacation but now we are no longer on vacation and I am really enjoying it. It's about a, orthoped or a woman that wants to be an orthopedic surgeon for sports medicine, wants to work with a football team specifically and do orthopedic surge surgeries on you know what have you. She's a bad Badass. She's a John Hopkins. She is like senior resident of orthopedic surgery. And yes, she is doing her thing. And she lives with this guy that I'm hoping, fingers crossed, because he seems, he was just introduced and he seems really, really, really swoony. Um, and his name is Ben. Her name is Nicole if I'm remembering that correctly. Her name is Nicole, his name is Ben, they live together. Well, he, she lives in like the garden apartment connected to his house or something like that. But they seem like they are gonna like hook up. I hope that that's who she hooks up with and that's what the story is about. But uh, yeah, I'm so far, I'm only about 12% into that one and I really like it. I'm. Uh, I was okay with putting it down to what to read Verity but at the same time I really 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 want to get back to it so I'm gonna do that and I will check back in with you guys later Ooh, okie dokie folks okie dokie just finished Verity by Colleen Hoover like I promised you guys this was not on the list originally but I am so mad right now. So mad. Don't know why anyone would think to put this damn book in the romance category, sub freaking categorize it as a romance in any sort of fucking way. Oh my God, I'm so mad. So mad that romance was even thought of for this book. Woo-wee! I... J I, I don't I don't even know 
I don't even know what I'm going to say about this. I am going to give it a three star because it definitely had me on the edge of my seat. But that fucking ending was like, what? Oh, I'm still, I'm still mad. I'm still mad. Still just mad, 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 so mad. That is the only word that I can come up with right now to talk about this book. Mad, 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 mad. So mad. So, so mad. And for you thriller freaking readers, if this is what you're supposed to feel like, then woo. Woo, woo, sa, woo. I, I, uh, I'm gonna go to my happy place and uh, finish listening to oh, Like Lovers Do by Tracy Levesag because I, I'm so mad right now. I'm so mad! Ooh. Ah! This is the type of thing that causes a reading slump when you get overly emotional about a book or you get mad at the book because... Th <clears throat> I can't tell you what happens in the book because then it would be spoilers and I just <sighs> it was a fucking experience that's that's I'm gonna leave it at that because otherwise so mad at this book so mad so mad that I broke my do not read ban on Colleen Hoover for this fucked up book right here just so mad so mad so mad y'all need to take romance off of that list of because it's not romantic at all whatsoever not at all straight thriller straight thriller straight thriller as a matter of fact oh dang it as a matter of fact I messaged Bree and she had the same feelings I did was like do we need to contact Colleen and be like who hurt you baby who hurt you who be because some of the things that she has these characters doing in this book mm. Woo! Girl, ooh. I, I just oh my god Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. I need to get into a better place. Get into a better place. Oh my god! Woo! After yesterday's debacle, debacle, that was Verity. <laughs> and you guys got to see me unravel completely. I've had some time to think about it and talk about it with those friends that convinced me to read it. And you know, like I was telling them, it's not a complete dumpster fire. The ending is what made me so, so mad. Um, so I'm going to leave this up. So if you don't want any spoilers about it, uh, check the description box. I will timestamp from here um, until I finish talking about this because this is going to be kind of spoilery. Um, so if you don't want to hear anything like that, you know, go from there. Um, so this picture will stay up until I'm finished talking about it and we've moved on to a different subject because I need to get spoilery right now. So the thing that I had an issue with, not that it was crazy because homegirl writes an autobiography about how she killed her children, how she didn't want them, how she was completely obsessed with this man that was her husband, and how she got into a car accident. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Why? 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 You had such a amazing amazing thriller going you had us just 
angry at this woman and thinking that she was a psychopath, that she's crazy, that she was out of her damn mind. And, you know, the fact that Lowen was like seeing her around that, uh, whatchamacallit, crew was, was talking to her, things like that. You could have left us at that. Colleen Hoover, you could have left us with just that. Adding that letter in at the end of the book was lazy and it was just, it defeated the purpose of the entire book altogether. Altogether. Oh my goodness. And if, like, someone, one of my friends was like, oh, but it leaves you, you know, thinking, was she really crazy? Wasn't she crazy? No, 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 no. The letter makes us want to be like, oh, well, that's good reasoning. That's why she did all that. Oh, it wasn't true. Oh, oh. Had we gotten the letter without actually reading the letter? Had we been just like teased with the fact that Lowen finds a letter type thing? It would have been so much better. I think I would have probably given it like five stars had Low Lowen not known what the letter said or had she read it and just kind of didn't tell us what the letter was um just like her reaction from it or something like that been like that would have left me like what what did the letter say what what why what was the thinking behind it what 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 was going on because even the scene where Jeremy kills Verity and the way that Lowen, you know, suggests it, it's like, okay, because Verity's then like, oh, wait, you know, let me explain, let, let me explain. But in his rage, he's not hearing her. So it's like, what? Okay. Okay. What? What is going on? You know? And I would have been just fine with that. Would have been just fine with that. Whoever says that this is a romance is a liar. Is a liar. Don't listen to them. It's not a romance. It is a straight thriller. And I'm not a big thriller fan. Not a big thriller fan. But I would definitely classify this one as a thriller. And I'm not going to give it a dumpster fire freaking rating. But at the same time, that ending was so so lazy so lazy in my book it just tried to explain away all the good creepy weird craziness that was put in the book in the first place with like a two-page letter no good no good whatsoever so i got home and had to cleanse the palate of that madness that was that book and I'm still real mad that I broke my Colleen Hoover not reading man to read that book all because of the ending had the ending been better I'd been like okay I would I still wouldn't read any of her other books but uh I I wouldn't be I wouldn't have been upset about it so oh so I'm read I picked up picked back up like lovers do by Tracy Levesay and y'all it was so good it was so so good so as I said before this is about Nick she is a orthopedic surgeon chief resident um she ends up well not she they end up taking the word of this first year resident uh statement of care or you know whatever he did because his father's donor over what she uh what she said because she reprimanded him and he went and complained and I loved it I loved it so then her roommate roommate sort of landlord kind of guy uh Ben who has been her friend since she moved into his place um into his like garden studio apartment type thing um, they've been friends and they really never looked at each other um, like anything more than just friends because he was always seeing women 
you know, that wanted to use him because of his family name and his wealth and things like that. And she just wanted to prove herself because she was a black female going into one of the um, elite sort of fields of medicine and she had to work harder and things like that. I loved that Tracy gave us that cultural short sort of standard that most black women have to deal with of working harder, doing it better, um, being better, always being on sort of edge, but at the same time, not being so over, so heavy handed with it that it came off preachy or that it was unrelatable. I related to this character so much, not in the medical field, but definitely understood where she was coming from, where the fact that, you know, the, the hospital took the other guy's side and sh how she was worried about her fellowship and just all of that, right? And so I've gotten off track, but her and Ben end up making this arrangement. He needs someone to be sort of the buffer with, uh, his friends and this ex that is like trying to get back into his into his life and he's like I am not dealing with her I don't want her um and when Nicole ends up accidentally sending him a tip pick oh those feelings come bubbling up to the forefront and then they have the whole fake dating type thing going on um I liked how she like I liked how Tracy handled um Nicole meeting Ben's friends and the microaggressions that the ex were throwing at her and stuff like that and the fact that Ben didn't ask Nicole about I mean he asked her about it but she was just like you know don't worry about it I got this then he went and he looked into the situation to find out why it was offensive on his own. I loved that. Loved it. Loved it. And for Ben to realize on his own that those are things that Nicole has to deal with on a daily basis. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. I stayed up until late last night to finish that and I loved it I loved it loved it loved it loved it like I said before I was a little worried that I needed to read the first book to really grasp this one and that is so not true they are true standalones um I am looking forward to reading the first book um going back and reading the first book because I kind of want to know about this friend and this small town mayor or sheriff something like that but yes looking forward to going back to that book but loved this book oh so happy I read it and uh you know now it's time to move on to the next book which I think is going to be um I think well played by Jen DeLuca is a pretty short audiobook that I have um an arc that I can read along with so I think I'm gonna read this one and uh we're just gonna keep it pushing yes Yes, this vlog is turning out to be kind of interesting, I think. I hope you guys enjoy it. Alrighty, guys, so I finished Well Played by Jen DeLuca. This is the second book in the Well Met series. And, ooh, guys, yeah, it was just meh. Mm. It was like, I, I don't even know how to describe, it was kind of boring. I'm sorry. It was kind of boring. I was not um, buying into Stacy and her, you know, her want to leave, but not wanting to leave because of her mom's health and, you know, wanting to stay, got to stay near her mom because last time she left, last time I left, um, you know, she had heart issues and always trying to take care of mom but wanting to do more and things like that so yeah I was just not not mm, not really feeling this one um push through it I mean it was entertaining I'm glad that we got back to the renaissance fair and stuff like that and there was lots of stuff about that but it just felt really really like chunky 
in all of Stacy's self-doubt and needing reassurance and things like that, I kind of thought, you know, Stacy was going to go into like the whole fashion thing, but no, no, that's not what she ended up doing. Like, figuring out that hey I should be in fashion I need to just go ahead and take that step no no and then the whole catfishing thing was just too long just dragged on way too long I mean come on really she should have just stuck with her initial gut feeling that something was wrong and that she wasn't actually talking to Dex. I mean, have you slept with him for like two or three summers and you don't understand, you didn't catch the fact that uh, he was the one, he wasn't the one writing you the email? Come on, come on, come on, come on! And the fact that she kind of belittles Daniel in the beginning of the book, like, oh, he's not as, as attractive, I mean, as, you know, Dax is, so, you know, he, he couldn't be on the radar. <sighs> so, yeah, I'm just like, mm. it just, it was a meh. It was a meh. Mm. But I am looking forward to Mitch and April's story, because... I want to see where that goes because their little jabs at each other were quite interesting. So uh, we'll be looking forward to that one. So that's all I'm going to say about that book. On to the next book. What is the next book? What are we going to try and read next? Let's see. I really should read Beach Read even though it's not on the ARC list. Um... I think I'm going to check the times and uh, figure out what I'm going to try to read next because this vlog actually is going to get cut on Friday, which is tomorrow, um, because then Saturday starts a 24-hour readathon. So, yeah, there's that. Eee! Crazy, crazy, crazy. So, alrighty. We'll see you guys later. Okay, guys. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, it's Saturday. And I've been relegated to uh, do this wrap-up in the car. The husband's in the car. Loads of fun. It's been an interesting week of uh, Read with Net Galley. Um, I got quite a few books done. So uh, let's go over those really quickly, if I can find that page where I wrote them down, because I have all my notes here. Oh, please tell me I brought the right book. Yes, I did. Okay, so we're gonna make this super, super quick because it's Saturday and I need to start another vlog because there's a 24 hour readathon going on and hopefully I will put this one, this vlog out before I put that vlog out, but I don't know how that's gonna go. Don't know how. I, I mean, 24 hours is a little easier to vlog and put out than a whole week's worth of stuff, but this week was different because like I told you guys in the beginning of this video, uh, I did it a little differently. I didn't do any like b-roll or montages or music extra music sort of I think I may have one clip in there that has some music but for the most part it was just strictly this is what I read this is how I felt about it this is how I felt while I was reading it Verde um, and you know that's it so let's see we read a total I read why am I saying we like I'm talking in third person I read a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven books in five days because I started this on Monday. Yay, go me. Ooh. Um, okay, so let's just give the rundown of um, I read Temporary Wife Temptation by J.C. Lee. I really enjoyed this. This is the first book in the Heirs of Hansel uh, series that J.C. is doing and a really sort of gave me that uh, 
marriage of convenience feel and I really enjoyed it. Then I read Secret Crush Seduction by JC Lee. Actually, I read that out of order. Or maybe I didn't. Nope, I did. I read it Simult I read it right next. Blech. Let's see if I can get that out. So read that one next, which is book number two in the Heirs of Hansel uh, series and really enjoyed that one. This family is a very complex and um, I think that JC really took her Korean heritage and wrapped it into the story, things that she knows, things that she's dealt with and just really enjoyed it. This book is about having a childhood crush on your brother's best friend and I loved that aspect of it. Um, now we're getting a little out of order because on the list I read out of order. Um, so I'm next I'm going to talk about Not Like the Movies by Carrie Winfrey and I enjoyed this book. Um, I do feel that I may have wanted to read the first book which was Waiting for Tom Hanks I believe it is. Um, to really grasp the the relationship between our main female character and her best friend who actually wrote the movie about her. Um, this is that best friend and the guy that she works with, her boss, they work in a coffee shop and, um, you know, they, they have this like banter that goes back and forth between each other. They're sort of denying the fact that they have a crush on each other and they'd be flirting with each other. Um, even though the story has been written about them and their lives and things like that, um, they're, they're denying it, but then they go to a coffee conference and they have to share a bed in a hotel uh, for the night and things happen. And then it's like, oh, no, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. First they shared a kiss, then they had to share a bedroom and or hotel room. And then it was like, but do I love him? Oh, oh. She did get a little annoying with that. Our main female character did get a little um, annoying with that with the fact that she always self-doubted herself and always wanted to do on her own. There is a good, um, in my opinion, good LGBT rep in this book. Uh, the characters are very fluid and um, very enjoyable and relatable. Next, I'm going to talk about Well Played by Jen DeLuca. I was a little sad about this one. I was actually looking forward to this, but this one definitely had um, that sort of jealousy undertone I guess you could say it was just a math book for me um so we're following the best friend to the first book's main female character uh I think her name is Stacy yes Stacy and she actually ends up getting catfished by one of the guys that tours with the band that plays at the renaissance fair and um she was hooking it up with the guy in the band but then he, it was like rumored that he has a girl at every run for air and she happened to be that town's girl. And then, so she cut him off and um, then she gets drunk one night and sends him this email and is like, oh, you don't really know my name and this and that because at the Ren Fair, they play characters and they have different names and all kinds of stuff like that. So then the band manager, who supposedly has noticed her from the beginning, um, is actually the one that is interacting with her through emails and text messages and things like that. And then she finds out that this is happening and it was like, oh, what was me? What was me? But then that turned around real quickly and it was like, oh, OK, yeah, it happens. Yeah. Um, so I just didn't feel the connection between the two of them. We all knew as readers, as you're reading it, you you know what's going on. You're like, homegirl, you're getting catfished. That is so not the guy you think is writing back and forth to you. He he totally freaking Roxanne you, like seriously. Or what do they call it, debergiacking you? I, yeah, yeah, total catfish story. Um, then we have Like Lovers Do by Tracy Livesey. And y'all, I loved this book. I was a little worried that... Um, I needed to read the first book in this series. This is a girl's trip series um, and I didn't. Uh, when I read the prologue, I was like, oh no, there's so much information in the prologue about the first story and the first couple and you know things like that. But then it veered off and by chapter two, we were 
knowing we were learning about our main female character, Nicole. She is an orthopedic surger, surgical resident, badass chick that has things that she wants to do. She's independent and she's great. And she is living in the house of um, a well-known doctor couple, um, their son, who decided not to go into medicine, who decided to go into finance and um, really sort of change his way of life and things like that. So, you know, you have him and they, she, what happens? Oh, she sends him a boob pic one night um, while she's celebrating. Well, not really celebrating. Maybe she was celebrating. I think she was celebrating. But then the next day she had to reprimand um, a, a peon of a resident, a first year resident. And then she ends up getting not really in trouble, but the hospital starts to um, gives her some leave. Let's just put it at that, right? Um, I love the way that Tracy balanced the black woman issues and problems that black women have in the workplace, especially in male dominated, white dominated locations and job fields. Um, she did it with such a balance that it wasn't over your head and it gave um, the fact that in, Nicole was independent, but at the same time, she had vulnerabilities and was relatable and you could, you know, see all of that. And then Ben, you have is her landlord or her friend that she's been living with for the last three years. He, when he receives that boob pic uh, that she mistakenly sent him uh, through text, they interact through text just a little bit and they figure out that they have attractions to each other. Um, he ends up inviting Nicole to the, to Martha's Vineyard, I believe it is, or Hamptons the Hamptons, something like that, but some richity rich place um, to his friend's estate. Um, and they have to do the fake dating thing, which ends up increasing their uh, like for each other. And uh, Ben ends up seeing some things that are going on with his friends, um, dealing with issues of interracial dating. And I really love the aspect that Nicole did not have to explain to Ben how what one of his friends ended up saying offended her. He went and he researched it and was like, that was offensive and I'm gonna have to put a, put a quash to that. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. So there's that. Um, let's see. Then we have Verity. I'm not gonna get all into that because I'm pretty sure there's like a... 10 minute rant about that book um and then a next day's follow-up sort of rant um I'm still real mad about that so we're just gonna leave that alone oh and Verity was by Colleen Hoover and then the final book that I'm gonna talk about is On the Corner of Hope and Maine by Beverly Jenkins this is book number 10 in the Blessing series and you guys I actually have to DNF this, but not DNF as in not going to ever read like it was a dumpster fire because it so is not. It's, it has the typical and what Beverly Jenkins is known for, the world building, the history lessons that go along with it, but this is the 10th book in the series. And this is a series you must, you must, you must read in order. Otherwise, you're going to feel like me and you're going to get whiplash if you just pick up this one because it just doesn't work. I got to the 50% mark and just could not take the whiplash anymore because there are so many storylines. There are so many characters and I couldn't, I don't know who I was supposed to focus on. Um, it, it reads as if this is a huge serial saga of the town and... Um, things like that. So yeah, I mean, I probably will give it a star rating on Goodreads, but I'm not sure if I'm going to or not. Um, but I most definitely will be putting it back on my uh, TBR or want to read list type thing versus um, I might write a review, not a star rating, just the like blurb or whatever. Um, or I might give it a star rating because I'm supposed to review it for NetGalley. I don't know. 
I haven't decided yet, but there might be something. Um, so yeah, there is that. So that is the week. I hope you guys enjoyed this new like style, what have you. Please let me know down in the comment section if you have read any of the books, what you thought about the books. Um, how do you like the style? Do you prefer that I continue to use B-roll and do montages and things like that? Or do you like this style of just, here's the book, here's my feelings, blah, blah, blah. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this video, that's just lovely. Um, car videos, gotta love them. Where was I at? Oh goodness. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, make sure that you're checking the description box. I will timestamp all the days of the videos and then I will put next to each one of the books which day you can hop to to hear about them. Well, actually, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just timestamp the books. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. You guys will see. Just check the description box, guys. Um, make sure that you're checking my Patreon. This is the soft roll. This is the soft roll outside of it. So if you really want more content, if you like these long form videos and things like that, they are definitely probably more or less going to be over there. I will still continue to put some up on the YouTube channel, but for the most part, since there is so much work that goes into this, this vlogging type thing may be one of the things that moves strictly for the patrons. So um, that hard rollout for Patreon, uh, for all of the content and all of the different things, different levels and things like that will be the first week of 2021 so make sure you get in there early because I've started putting content over there that's strictly for the patrons um, and to give teasers and things like that so there is that thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys in the next video